We are now moving on to our in-hand utility class and I'm going to explain to you what the judge will be expecting to see in this class. We are looking for a pony that is going to give a smooth and flowing test, very obedient to the rider's commands from the ground. We don't want to see a pony that is pulling and tugging a child while it's leading it in hand. We don't want to see a pony misbehaving or a horse misbehaving with the child and bucking and spinning around the child. So we're looking for a very obedient pony that is going to be doing various obstacles through the walk, through the trot and also halt and then to replace the obstacle as well. So let us watch a few of the children going through their paces and we will comment as we go along. This is the score sheet for the in-hand utility. Very similar to our working hunter um, score sheet. All right, with the level, the horse's name, the rider's name, the province and the judge. And again, you will see that there are six different type of tests, all right, or obstacles that you will be given. Each obstacle marked out of 10 and you will be given a mark out of 10 in that block. Very easy for you to remember, all right, one to three, satisfactory, four to six needs improving, seven to nine is good, and 10 is excellent. And then a mark out of 10 for style and manners, no confirmation at any level. We have our first competitor coming in, which is our level one high school, coming in to introduce herself to her judge. All competitors are to please make sure that when they do introduce themselves to the judge that they, may, they may are loud and clear enough when they speak to the judge because sometimes as we get that little bit older us judges tend to be um, suffering from a lack of hearing a little bit. So please ask your pupils or your children to speak loud enough when introducing themselves to the judge. Right, obstacle one is walk over the trotting poles on a right rein. So what the judge is expecting to see is a horse that is walking actively over the poles, not wrapping the poles at all. We want to see on, on this type of obstacle two footfalls per in between each pole. Obstacle two is trot through the bending poles. You can see that this pony is very obedient in all its work, staying next to its handler, not trying to rush past its handler, going at the same speed that its handler is asking it to trot. So obstacle three, halt at the drum, pick up the basket and count to five, replace the basket. Now in this we could ask our pony to stand a little straighter by him keeping his head a little straighter to improve our marks as well. Obstacle four is walk through the lane. Pony looks very interested, the ears are forward, keeping up with its handler straight in and turning and walking straight out. Trot to obstacle number five, which is the left hand upright. Halt at the left hand upright and count to five. Lovely square halt shown by this pony and its handler and five very clear um, counts there. The pony could now be a little bit more active. The child is a little bit ahead of its pony. Walk onto the mat, halt on the mat, and salute, and leave the arena. Very well executed test, very nicely done. Our next competitor that we have coming in is level three high schools. She will come in now, come and halt and introduce herself to the judge. Right, in her test, and as we go up the levels, obviously the test will become that slightly more difficult. So in her test, her obstacle number one would be trot over the, trot over the fan poles on a right rein. And here we can see this competitor is now doing the obstacle on the incorrect rein, which is on the left rein. So her marks will go down quite dramatically. Please read very carefully the instructions on each one of your tests to make sure that each movement is correctly executed. Good rhythm through those bending poles. She will now come to obstacle number three, which is halt the drum, pick up the toy or the basket and trot a circle around the drum and replace the basket.
pony could have picked up the trotter a little bit sooner than that. The, uh, the, the handler actually had quite a few trot steps before the pony went into trot. But a good sized circle, balance that pony into its halt before you actually put the basket down. Very neatly done. We are now going to trot through the lane. That was a better transition there. And a loss of rhythm through that, but it's quite a sharp turn in that lane. Trot over the jump. Very neatly done. Walk onto the mat, halt on the mat, and salute. And a very neat halt onto the mat. And salute, and walk out of the arena. Well done. We're going to touch on turnout um, for this particular class. And if you go and read your rules very carefully on the Sinisa website, you will see that the rules clearly say that breeches and long boots are not really suitable for this class. So it should actually be cream colored jodhpurs with jodhpur boots. Jeans are not allowed. All right. As this child is turned out here with her riding hat, tweed coat with a collar and a tie, brown leather gloves. The only thing that we would actually change is we would not have breeches with gaiters and jodhpur boots. We would take the gaiters off and she would just have her jodhpurs. Confirmation in level one and three is not taken into account and there is not a mark out of, uh, out of um, 10 um, yes, there is a mark for out of 10 for style and manners, but no mark given for confirmation. All right, so there we go. You will notice with this rider as well, as is permitted with every child, can you clearly see the number? The rider's, whoop, sorry, you know, clearly marked the rider's number, which has to be on the left arm of the rider, and every rider has to have that on their arm when they compete. Thank you, my girlie, if you'd like to walk away. Next one, if you would like to come out. All right, you're going to stand in front of your pony for us. There we go. All right, here we have a pony that has got a snaffle bridle on, but this time with a flash nose band, perfectly acceptable. Pony very well turned out, plaited, neatly brushed out tail, rider in a lovely tweed jacket. But again, what we would change here is again the long boots will come off and we will just have ordinary jodhpurs with a pair of jodhpur boots. Thank you very much. You may walk back. Ian, if we could have a look on the bridle again. The brow band. For our working classes, so our working hunter and our in hand utility as well as our working riding, the brow bands are to be plain leather brow band. No V-shaped diamante brow bands, no coloured brow bands that we would see in the performance classes. Working horses, everything is done in a plain leather brow band. And now we have a child that actually has a pair of jodhpurs with her jodhpurs over her jodhpur boots. And it is, looks so much neater and I'm sure it is going to aid the child a lot more as well, especially when they're having to run in hand. And it certainly creates a far better picture than having the boots on. And again, I'm urging in all instructors and parents to please download the rules off of the Sinisa website. It is not only for your benefit, but it is also to the benefit of your child. Um, you know what, we certainly don't want to have points taken off of your child because of incorrect tack that is actually on your horse, when it is clearly visible there for you all to see and for your points to improve.